Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. To an explosion struck Jammu and Kashmir, two injured. FSAS organizes event on terrorism during the 51st session of the UNHRC in Geneva. And deadly explosion rocks Afghan capital, several injured. Let's begin the show with India's Jammu and Kashmir, where just days ahead of Home Minister's visit, two mysterious blasts occurred in Uddhapur. The first explosion took place in an empty bus parked outside a petrol pump in Udhampur's Domail area around 10.30 p.m. on September 28, in which two people suffered injuries. Another blast took place just within eight hours, around four kilometers away from the first blast in an empty bus parked inside the Udhampur bus stand around 6 a.m. No terror group has yet claimed responsibility for the attack, but as per sources, Lashkar was behind the twin blasts. A report. On 28th September, around 10.30 p.m., an explosion occurred in an empty bus parked near a petrol pump at Do Mile Chowk in Udhampur. Two people got injured in the blast. Just within a few hours, around 5.30 a.m., another blast took place in the city's old bus stand along the road leading to Udhampur Ramnagar. This time, the roof and the backside of the bus were blown away by the blast. According to sources, before the second explosion, two unidentified persons loaded some luggage, including a mattress, on the roof of the bus for their transportation to Ramnagar in the morning. The explosion took place nearly three hours after they left. According to Jammu and Kashmir police report, the blasts were caused by IED bombs. The attack was very strong. There are two people who have been injured. And there are also two cars that have been damaged here. But what is the nature of the blast? What is the nature of the blast? After the nature of the blast, we will tell you about this. The explosion occurred just days ahead of the Home Minister's three-day visit to Jammu and Kashmir in the first week of the coming month. Sources claim park back terror group lashkar e is involved behind the twin bomb blast. This was the third incident of bomb blast in Udhampur earlier in March this year. The city fell prey to a similar blast which led to the death of one and caused injuries to 17 people owing to the plantation of a sticky bomb. Locals in Udhampur came out at three places in the town and held anti-Pakistan protests. They also burnt effigies of Pakistan and raised slogans. बिल्कुल प्रोटेस्ट इसलिए कह रहे हैं कि तीन महीने पहले भी ये हुआ था तब भी कोई किसी को होश नहीं आई कल भी हुआ रात को उसके बाद भी कोई होश नहीं आई आज फिर हुआ तो ये हमारे शहर की सुरक्षा का बिल्कुल एक सेंध लगी है बुरी तरह और जो लोग पीसफुली रह रहे थे उनको एक तरीके से दहशत दी गई है जम्मू एंड कश्मीर हैज विटनेस्ड अ रैपिड डेवलपमेंट सिंस आफ्टर द एब्रिगेशन ऑफ आर्टिकल 370 टू एंड इट्स स्पेशल स्टेटस there was also a decline in terror-related incidents and cross-border infiltration. However, in the past few days, there has been a spate of incidents when terrorists have targeted many civilians, especially from the minority community. As per the report of South Asia Terrorism Portal, 804 incidents of attacks by terrorists have taken place in Jammu and Kashmir in the last three years. The highest numbers of incidents, 321, were reported in 2020 and 209 incidents have taken place till September this year. While Jammu and Kashmir attempts to return to normalcy, Pakistan ramps up its efforts to cause havoc in the region. The country has always attempted, with varying degrees of intensity, to destabilize India undermine its unity and subvert its integrity and this strategy is unlikely to change. 
The Indian security forces, on the other hand, are fully committed to bringing peace to the Kashmir Valley. Recently, there have been numerous operations across Jammu and Kashmir that have resulted in the elimination of several terrorists, many of whom were foreign nationals. Pakistan is on the verge of collapse, not just economically, but socially as well. And the voices of dissent are growing strong. Some of the worst human rights crimes are committed in a nation where the military and Islamic fundamentalists rule the roost. The activists accuse the authorities of discrimination and carelessness in carrying out rescue operations, even though the country is experiencing catastrophic flooding. Take a look. Pakistan is on the verge of collapse, not just economically, but socially as well. And the voices of dissent are growing strong. Some of the worst human rights crimes are committed in a nation where the military and Islamic fundamentalists rule the roost. Three of Pakistan's provinces, Sindh, Balochistan, and Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, still remain underdeveloped, where poverty and malnutrition are rampant. The government does not appear to make any effort to upgrade the educational or medical infrastructure. Those brave individuals who demand their fundamental rights are facing persecution at the hands of security agencies and Islamic fundamentalists. The activists further accuse the authorities of discrimination and carelessness in carrying out rescue operations, even though the country is experiencing catastrophic flooding. In locations where there has been significant damage caused by the floods, activists are calling for international help to save Pakistan's forgotten residents. The narrative the Pakistan government is saying it is a, a climate change. Yes, there is a climate change, but it's not scientifically established that it was climate change or one of these meteorological events. We have got more than enough evidence that they did it deliberately to drown Sindh and to drown Sindhi people. Terrorist, terrorist, During the 51st session of the UN Human Rights Council, the Sindhis, Baloch, Pashtuns, and activists from Pakistan-occupied Kashmir raised their voices for justice. According to the Human Rights Watch Report 2021, the authorities in Pakistan expanded their use of draconian sedition and counter-terrorism laws to stifle dissent and strictly regulated civil society groups critical of government actions or policies. Women, religious minorities, and transgender people continue to face violence, discrimination, and persecution, with authorities failing to provide adequate protection or hold defenders accountable. The government has turned a blind eye to law enforcement agencies' brazen acts of torture and other serious abuses. The political activists from Pakistan-occupied Kashmir blame the army and other authorities for exploiting their natural resources. Meanwhile, the indigenous people continue to live in abject poverty. हमारी फॉरेस्ट लैंड जो है वो आर्मी ने अलर्ट करवा दी है डिफरेंट एरियाज के अंदर और जितने भी टूरिस्ट रिसॉर्ट्स थे उन पे कब्जा करके मकामी लोगों के लिए उन एरियाज को बैन कर दिया है इन अप्रैल ऑफ 2021 द यूरोपियन पार्लियामेंट पास्ड अ रेजोल्यूशन ऑन द डिप्लोरेबल ह्यूमन राइट्स वायलेशंस इन पाकिस्तान एंड कॉल्ड फॉर एन इमीडिएट रिव्यू ऑफ पाकिस्तान्स एलिजिबिलिटी फॉर जीएसपी प्लस स्टेटस व्हिच ग्रांट्स पाकिस्तान ट्रेड बेनिफिट्स on condition of its compliance with human rights obligations. During a recent visit to Islamabad, MEPs from the European Parliament's Subcommittee on Human Rights discussed a wide range of human rights topics in their meetings with Pakistan's top political leaders. The MEPs said it was important for Pakistan to undertake timely reforms and legislative changes on human rights issues and to translate them into concrete improvements. They called for determined and structured action including the swift adoption of laws against torture and enforced disappearances, steps to substantially reduce the number of crimes carrying the death penalty, and to apply the new procedures for mercy petitions. Despite facing pressure from international organizations, the human rights situation in Pakistan remains grim, and voices of dissent are on the rise. Let's now shift our attention to Afghanistan, where increased violence is raising fears that the country will once again become a hotspot for instability and terrorism in South Asia and beyond. 
Dozens of groups that have been present since the Taliban's last reign of terror are back in action, looking for new ways to expand their reach. Explosions are killing people across the war-torn country and there is blood and fear everywhere. Recently, following Friday press, a deadly explosion near a mosque rocked the Afghan capital in which seven people died and at least 41 suffered injuries. A deadly blast near a mosque rocked the Afghan capital following Friday prayers. The explosion in Kabul occurred at the Wazir Muhammad Akbar Khan Mosque. A car bomb went off as worshippers were leaving the site, killing at least seven and wounding 41. A column of black smoke rose into the sky and shots rang out several minutes after the explosion near the mosque. No group has yet claimed responsibility for the bomb blast. Afghanistan has been hit by regular attacks since the Taliban group seized power in August last year. Many of them have been claimed by the Islamic State. Just a few days ago, the Russian embassy in Kabul was targeted by the Islamic State group. The suicide bombing resulted in at least eight fatalities. Sources claim that the bombers set up the explosives at the southwest corner of the capital, close to the building's entrance. Two members of the embassy staff are among the dead and as many as 15 others were injured. Islamic State has grown to be the Taliban's most formidable adversary. The conflict between the two factions is currently muddy and violent. After the combat following the Taliban takeover ended, the security situation in the nation had improved, but it is now thought to be deteriorating. You see, Taliban has been a fighting force all along. And at this stage, they need to learn how to govern. And that has been their major challenge. Now, as we know, that there are large number of groups because Taliban is also not a homogeneous entity. And therefore, what we see is that there is there are many challenges that it is facing. It is still waiting for recognition from the world. It is also uh, hoping that it will continue to receive the funding that has been committed so that it can also provide relief to the people. Terrorism poses a persistent threat to Afghanistan, while at the same time, the Taliban have impeded its transition to freedom. The nation is currently experiencing a serious humanitarian and economic calamity. The promise that existed when women played a significant part in society has been replaced with starvation, despair and violence. It is quite challenging to grasp how dramatically so many people's lives have altered in such a small amount of time. The European Foundation for South Asian Studies organized a side event on terrorism in South Asia during its session of the UN Human Rights Council in Geneva. A group of reputed scholars and academicians brainstormed on the complexities of terrorism in South Asia, Indo-Pak relations and Jammu and Kashmir conflict and also the link between South Asia and the global terrorism. A report. On the sidelines of the 51st session of the UN Human Rights Council in Geneva, the European Foundation for South Asian Studies organized a very engaging and thought-provoking side event on terrorism and its effect on human rights in South Asia. 
a panel of scholars, political analysts, researchers, journalists and human rights activists in the field of terrorism and the South Asian politics discuss the proliferation of terrorist organizations in the region of South Asia. The event was moderated by Mr. Junaid Qureshi, director of EFSAS, and was attended by a large number of attendees. The issue of increasing terrorism in Pakistan was discussed extensively in the event. Pakistani military establishment or the secret uh, agencies uh, has started a uh, controversial negotiation with uh, Tehrik Taliban Pakistan who are directly involved and who have uh, confessed uh, the brutal killing of innocent Pashtuns uh, in thousands of no in numbers and uh, because of their brutality uh, thousands of uh, uh, people have been di uh, internally displaced. There are numerous illegal madrasas or religious schools in Pakistan and Afghanistan that force young people to engage in jihad. They instill enmity towards other religions and encourage people to participate in gun culture. The Taliban and the dreaded Haqqani network were born from such madrasas in Pakistan. Under the cover of Pakistan's intelligence agency, terrorist organizations such as the Lashkar-e Taiba or Jaish e Mohammed and others continue to operate terror factories in the country. Pakistani military establishment has been creating, harboring and sponsoring terrorist groups that have targeted minorities throughout Pakistan and have been supported diplomatically and judicially by state authorities. The recent negotiations between state authorities and the TTP have been highly controversial in the tribal areas. People in the region believe that Pakistan has no soft corner for human rights activists but offer protection for terrorist elements that commit cross human rights violations. A loudspeaker like this in Pakistan is something that you know you cannot say uh, bad things on loudspeaker, on, for example, in a mosque or something. And uh, while uh, these mullahs and religious people, the, the religious leaders, they always instigate people. Through violence, uh, through the loudspeaker, nobody cares. I mean, nobody is arrested for that. The recent attack underlined a surge in terrorist activities that Pakistan has witnessed since the Taliban took control of Kabul last year. An Islamabad-based think tank, the Pakistan Institute for Peace Studies, recently published a report endorsing the fear that Pakistan has been slowly sliding into chaos and instability for the last couple of years. Instead of concentrating on terrorism that is posing serious challenge to Pakistan, the ruling dispensation in the country is involved in appeasing radicals. The future of Pakistan hence appears bleak with multidimensional waves of chaos, uncertainty and insurgency. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We will be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at anin.com. This is Shivangi Mishra signing off on the behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care. <laughs>